this watch collection update video, you'll find out which watches I kept, what is new, and also which watches unfortunately had to go. Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch King. I hope you're having all a good day. Today we are doing an update of my personal watch collection. I put all my watches, clocks, and also other fun collectibles on the table in front of me, and we'll go through all of them together. So on the left side here we have watches which were featured in my August 2020 video. If you want to know more about my first watches, the stories and reasons why I bought them, I will put the link down in the description. Today we'll talk about the two watches that left the collection and which watches are new. You'll see there's quite a few new watches here on the table. 2021 was quite a year, a true roller coaster on all fronts, but luckily it ended up on a positive note. The luxury watch industry has seen a lot of growth in 2021 and some models and even whole brands skyrocketed in terms of popularity. Personally, I dove deep into some other hobbies and started collecting pocket watches, clocks, books and also writing instruments like fountain pens for example, which you also have here on the table. This is something I started in the last half year I would say and it quickly spiraled into you know buying one fountain pen a month almost so I'm a big fan of the Pelican pens here, they have a beautiful body. Otto Hood, Monte Grappa, a custom piece at the very end here with the nice decoration and wood. And also the Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir. I buy fountain pens and I use them because I want to basically write down my thoughts, write down my goals, my daily tasks and also at the end of the day recap what kind of a day I had. It's basically a type of self-therapy if you think about it. Before I talk about which watches are new in the collection, I want to take a moment to show you the two watches that left. First was my Audemar Piguet Royal Oak and the second one is my Gerald Genta with a gorgeous chocolate dial. Although I love the design of the watch and the proportions, I barely wore my Gerald Genta. And because of that, I decided to sell it for a slight loss. It's now in the hands of a good friend, a collector who does wear it and it puts a smile on my face every time I see it. The Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Cell was tough and it is truly a perfect size AP and one that I was super excited to receive, wear and I was also really proud of it. If I would have kept it till today, the watch is currently worth around 20,000 US dollars more than what I got. But when it comes to my business and my watches, the business is a priority as it is the thing that made it possible for me to buy the watches in the first place. Of course, I'm upset that I don't own the AP anymore, but this short-term sacrifice, I think, was worth a long-term goal and I can't wait to buy one again and keep it in the future. So one of the first watches I got between the old and the new collection is this mundane stop to go piece. I also made a video on it. It's a really cool watch, quirky quartz design. As I see now, uh, the battery has died, so <laughs> shows you how much I wear this watch. I pretty much bought it for the review and I wanted to give it to somebody, but then I forgot about it, so I just kept it in my office. <laughs> the back is closed, nothing special there, with the uh, mundane logo and also the uh, logo of the Swiss Train Federation, and that's about it. The next watch I purchased, which I'm super proud of and I love to wear it, is my Sartori Biard Ghost. So Sartori Biard is a brand that's been going upwards since the last one and a half years, I would say. And this was actually a concept or an idea me and Armand Biard from Satoy Biard had when we spoke on Instagram. As you see, the idea was to create a watch which would be kind of like a concept watch inspired by the Moser dials. And actually everything you see is mirror polished titanium. The buckle, the case pack, the crown, the dial, the hands, and that's it. He made the limited edition of 10 pieces which were sold in a day. And this is the only watch from Sartori Biat, which has a closed case back like this and is fully polished. He will never recreate it, that was the deal. And I think it's a great watch and I like to wear it sometimes to meetings where I need to be a bit more neutral. So when I have this watch on the wrist, nobody knows what I'm wearing, which is cool. And for people that do know it, they're happy to see it. The next piece I bought and actually the first watch I bought in January 2021, it was right at the beginning of the month was this Cartier Basculant. So this is the Cartier Tank Basculant, reference number 2390. It is the large model and actually it has a manual winding movement inside. Why is it called Basculant? Which basically means, you know, the window when you open it or in Romanian it means the, the truck which goes up and down. 
you can basically flip the watch to protect the dial. This is a concept in a watch which was made by the same company that created the Jaeger Le Coultre Reverso watch. This year, this watch celebrates the 90th anniversary of the model. So maybe Cartier will bring out something cool in the Basculant line this year. Who knows? I'm excited if they do. I think this is the best watch you can have for the price. I paid 3,600 Swiss francs for it. And I also bought a new case pack. Because if you saw my review on this watch, you saw that my case spec was dented and now it's fully refurbished because basically I got a new one. This was expensive though, guys. So if you buy old Cartier and you want to service it and you have to pay for new parts, only the case spec, the small metal component was 2,000 Swiss francs. This watch is now trading at around 8.5 to 12,000 Swiss francs. So I'm still in the green. But again, I didn't buy it because I wanted to have an investment for the future. I just liked it. I think it was quirky and the price was right. The next watches I purchased were these iPod watches. Here we have the iPod Megapod, which is a nice UFO looking piece. Very cool case, has no lugs as you can see, so the strap is integrated. It's very light, has a nice sunburst blue dial with a nice contrast with the orange hand. On the back, you can see the movement. It's actually an automatic Miyota movement inside, Japanese, reliable, works like a charm, and that's it. I do wear this watch in the summertime because of the rubber and because I have no sleeves in the summertime. With sleeves, it's slightly hard to put it on, but nonetheless, nothing too difficult. Also from iPod, I have this beautiful Solaris. So many of you haven't seen this watch yet. It's actually made out of ceramic and two different types of ceramic. You see we have here a white one and on the back we have the black one. So basically, you can flip this watch around, depends on your mood, like this, or you basically have to turn it around to be like this. A pretty cool watch, cool size, not so common to see. And I actually bought this from the iPod website. They have a vintage corner where they still have a few available. This cost me around 3,500 Swiss francs. A very cool watch and a very unique watch designed by Mark Newson back when he was still at the company. And this was supposedly an inspiration of a very popular watch made by Apple later down the line. If that's all true, we'll never know, but we can see some resemblance. At this point, you also might be wondering, what am I wearing on the wrist? It's actually not a wrist watch, so basically not a functional piece. It's a 3D printed model of the Armin Strom Tribute 1. A very detailed 3D print, I would say. It's uh, comfortable and it's the only watch I have which is not on the table that I can have like this because it doesn't work. Again, a very cool piece. It was gifted to me by the company. I love to wear it sometimes because people just think I'm crazy. That's it. Very simple. <laughs> now we're gonna go into this watch right here. This is the Louis Rar Vianney Halter collaboration. A very special watch designed by Vianney Halter. And Louis Rar is a brand with which we partner pretty frequently now. So we launched the Vianney Halter on our YouTube channel. We helped them with the push and I purchased one for myself because when you have a watch for 3,500 Swiss francs with the Vianney Halter name on it, I think you shouldn't skip it. Simple as that. It's very nice to wear, fits the wrist well, cool strap. It does rub off quickly, so I'm gonna probably change it. But overall, the watch is pretty nice. I love the fountain pen shaped hands and I just love the overall look of the watch. The case pack is nothing special. We have the automatic rotor here, so it's not a quartz watch, obviously, but it's a workhorse movement that does the job and that's it. This watch I bought because I love the design of the dial. And again, Vianney Halter. Currently, I cannot buy any classic or Antiqua or any other crazy pieces he made. So this is the one that basically, you know, does it for the moment. I also own another watch from Louis Rar. This is the Allen Zilberstein collaboration. This is the Mono Pusher Chronograph. So basically it has a plastic pusher here with which you can engage and disengage the chronograph. So the squiggly yellow hand shows the chrono. Here we go, now it's running. And the long arrow shaped hand shows the minutes and the big circular red hand shows the hours. And the sub dial shows the chronograph minutes. Again, we push the crown to stop it and to reset we pushed again. A very cool watch with a very comfortable hook and loop system. I love to wear this watch on the wrist, guys. Because it has a bulky case, the hook and loop system makes it look smaller and also very comfortable. You see, it fits my wrist really well. 
and I can't emphasize enough how comfortable the strap is. I was looking into getting something similar from other watches, but it doesn't exist. Maybe I'll just buy like a Velcro for a few of them. Very cool piece, love to wear it, puts a smile on my face. Again, this was 4,500 Swiss francs, a limited edition of 178 pieces, which we also launched on our YouTube channel, and many of you guys actually purchased it, and I hope you're happy with the watch. The next watch I also bought at the beginning of last year was this beautiful and rare Cartier. This is a Cartier Tortue Perpetual, so it's a perpetual calendar Cartier with a beautiful dial, and you can see that it's from the CPCP collection. CPCP stands for Cartier Paris Collection Privé. It's an initiative Cartier launched in 1998, and it was supposedly targeted mainly at men at a time when men were becoming decidedly more aware of their watches, leading them to demand more mechanical calibers. My watch was created in September 2003 and sold in Lucerne on the 16th of December 2003 to a nice customer. It's in exquisite condition and it features still all original components. The watch proportions are small on paper, but on the wrist it has quite the presence. It's a platinum cased, beautifully polished, with a nice crown and a cabochon in it. As you can see, it has a beautiful flower pattern in the middle of the dial, which goes outwards, which is typical for the CPCP line. I love the balance of the dial. It's a bit busy, but because everything is symmetrical, I really love it. it features nice blued hands and of course, breguet style hour and minute hand. I don't wear this watch a lot because it sits weirdly on the wrist of, because of the strap. So once I get a nice strap for it, maybe something softer, I'm gonna wear it a bit more. As you can see on the case spec, the movement is beautifully decorated, typical for the CPCP line with the Cartier logo, and the bottom of the case is curved, as is the glass, so there's a bit of a distortion when you want to photograph or film the watch. It's a beautiful piece, very rare I think. I saw just two online, one is currently for sale at I Collected Man, so definitely check them out if you want to see some cool watches. And the last auction price this watch achieved was I think by Philips, and the price was around 35,000 US dollars. I bought this watch for less because I found it in a retail store, which I didn't expect to find it at, but again, lucky finds, and I'm super happy that I got it. So the next watch I also purchased last year was this beautiful Chrono Swiss Open Gear Resec. Resec stands for Retrograde Seconds. And at six o'clock here, you can see that we have a nice subdial, which shows that passing of the 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, the hand jumps back to zero and then restarts. We have a regulator style display, which means that at 12 o'clock we have a sub dial for the hour indication, which is also skeletonized, and the long hand that goes around the dial is for the minutes. So once you get used to reading it, it's not a, even a problem. The dial is handmade, Guilloche in Lucerne by Mike Panciera. It's a very funny story how this watch came to be. We were filming something at Colonel Swiss and I saw this dial and I asked Mike uh, what this dial is for, you know, if it's like a collection or a different model. And he's like, no, this is just a dial I made as a test. It's basically a prototype and I'll never use it. And I loved it. <laughs> so what we did is, so we put that dial at custom piece because it also says 00 out of 00 on the plaque now in this beautiful brown case. I like to wear this watch, it's very special. You don't see many Chrono Swiss watches around, so when you find somebody who owns one, they're really happy you have it as well. This watch costs around 9,700 Swiss francs, but ask Chrono Swiss if they can make you a custom dial and how, what the price would be, if they will even do it. So the next two watches I bought basically because I made a video about watches under $500. So first of all, I bought this Brew watch and the Baltic watch and also a Tissot watch. I'm gonna put the link in the description of that video. The Tissot PRX with a silver dial I gifted to my cousin and these two watches I kept for myself. Baltic is a young French brand. They do really nice watches and they're really well priced. So this model here is the HMS model with a blue gill dial and also automatic winding rotor on the back, a nice Miota movement. This costs around 370 US dollars, as you see it now, with the beads of rice bracelet and also a leather strap. Great value if you ask me. This is the Brew Retromatic watch with a beautiful green dial. The dial is inspired by vintage espresso makers, so, you know, the bottom of it. I love how the hands are in contrast with the dial. 
I know Jonathan, the founder of the watch brand, really cool guy, super nice to talk to. If you have some questions online, just ask him, he'll gladly answer you. And he launched two new models, which I also like. One is the metric in different colors, and another one is called the 8-bit watch. Super quirky watch, nice design, and definitely a home run. So Jonathan, good job. Definitely not my last watch I bought from Brew. The price of the Brew Retromatic is around 425 US dollars. Again, a cool value proposition like the Baltic, and you help out young guys to create cool watches in the future for us. I also have another Baltic in my collection, and this watch I actually bought when I was in Dubai in November. So I visited Dubai for the Dubai Watch Week. You can see all the videos on my channel. We had a lot of fun, by the way. If you saw the vlog, you'll see that for sure. And this is the Aquascape model with a GMT function. This watch was made in collaboration with the Perpetual Gallery in Dubai. This is run by Hamdan bin Humayt, who is the founder of the gallery. And he always makes these cool additions with the gallery and with special brands. The first Baltic they made was with a green dial in a few different variations. And this is the latest edition. Limited to 71 pieces with beautiful colors, this costs around 2,100 US dollars. It's, I think, 1,000 US dollars more than the regular Aquascape GMT from Baltic. But again, this is limited. It's made out of titanium, so it's extremely light. The other ones are made from stainless steel. I like the color combinations. I love to wear it. It's a limited edition. Nothing else I would say about this watch. You have the Eastern Arabic numerals on the bezel and also on the dial. And they all have nice loom. Something I also stumbled upon online is this vintage new old stock 1930s jump hour watch. A very avant-garde design with the applied gold on the case. We've got the hours here at 12 o'clock. Below in the smiley face we have the minutes. And below the minutes you have the seconds indication. A very cool watch. Nicely proportioned if you ask me for today's times as well. Easily wearable if you have a nice suit. It's in working condition, which I'm really surprised when I got the watch. And the price was right. I didn't pay a lot for this watch. I think I paid around 300 Swiss francs maybe. But these watches nowadays are going up in prices. So if you want to buy them online, in this condition, you're going to have to pay a lot more. It's not branded, so there's no brand on the watch, on the case or the movement. But it's a cool watch. I wanted to have it and that's it. Very simple. I stopped overcomplicating why I buy something and for which reason. So now if I like a watch and I think about it a few days, I just buy it, that's it. And in the case of vintage watches, if you see it, you like it, the price is good, go ahead. Also something older that I purchased last year was this beautiful Jean Dev watch. Also new old stock with a nice retrograde dial display. I love the strap which was made by my good friend Atelier Petrov in Basel. He makes cool strap from different materials, so he made this custom for me, for my size, of course. You see on the back, we have the sector name, that's the name of the model, brushed. And I also got the box and papers with this watch. I like to wear it because some of the older generation sales guys actually remember selling this back in the day. So when I went to a store in Zurich and I had this watch on the wrist, one of the guys had nightmares because he said it was really difficult to service and change and the batteries and all that. But again, a cool piece. It wasn't expensive. I think I paid around 300 Swiss francs as well for this watch. Again, new old stock, I think it's worth it. It's a nice watch to have in the collection. Another watch which I also bought in Dubai very spontaneously. I love to do it when I'm there. I bought this nice Seiko with Eastern Arabic numerals and a green summer style. I like it. It fit the wrist perfectly. It was great for the desert. No sand came inside. And I just like to have it as a memory piece. That's it. What I always wanted to have is this beautiful piece right here. So there's an Instagram account called I am Casa and it's run by Andrea. He's a watch collector who likes vintage watches and also he has a crush on the Cartier crash. And he's one of the guys who always posts this soft watch by XIQ. This is inspired by the Dali painting, of course. You can see this one is in new old stock condition. I've got the papers and the box with it as well. The buckle is even shaped like the case, which is, I think, extremely rare for a watch in this price category. And even the last part of the strap is shaped like the case. A lot of attention to detail. We see the inscription of Dali on the back for a watch in this price category. 
It's quite a big watch from the 90s. You see I have an 18.1 centimeter wrist and wearing it now, it, it still looks like it's a modern piece. Something really cool and actually they're getting harder and harder to find. I asked my friend Raf who lives in Italy, he goes by the Instagram handle Time by Raf, if he can find me this watch in new old stock. We were just casually talking about it on the phone. And just for the sake of the conversation, he went online and actually immediately found a new old stock piece, which was this one. He was shocked because he was searching for these watches all the time. And I think it was just a lucky timing that I got one. With shipping and everything, I only paid 220 euros for this watch. And nowadays on Chrono24, they're above 1000 Swiss francs. If you can buy them online and find the lucky one, go ahead, pull the trigger. I think you will like it. It's a quartz watch, not mechanical, but again, in watches like these and like the one from Jean Dev, like this one, I don't care about the movement that much. I'm more focused on the design of the case and also the other details it features. A very cool watch, I do wear it, but it's slightly bling bling because it's all in gold. Of course, not real gold, but it has a nice presence and I think it shouts a bit too much for me. Hortenrix Watches from the Netherlands is a company I've been following probably since the inception of it. I love the idea of 3D printed cases. I spoke to Michael Holtenrich a long time ago. We also had him on the channel once. So if you want to learn more about the watches and see other models, check the link in the description. We had a lot of fun in that video. And when I saw this watch, which was a collaboration with the Rake magazine, I was really intrigued by having it. I ordered this watch from Michael directly and I got it. And when I got it, I was in love. I wear this watch a lot. It's extremely light, extremely thin. It's made out of stainless steel, but it's 3D printed, very detailed, polished, and it has this raw look from the side. The dial is Japanese Orushi lacquer. It looks like enamel, what also many people think when they see it. It has beautiful polished Brigade numerals on the dial, scratchernized hands, which are known for Holtenich watches. And again, a very classical piece and also a very avant-garde independent piece. The front is beautiful, but this watch also features an open case pack with a very nicely hand-decorated Perseus 7001 movement, which is frosted and beveled. The price of this model was 5,700 Swiss francs. I think it's a good value proposition if you want to buy a nice independent. Again, you support a really cool guy and his team, and you'll be really happy once you buy this watch. When I was in Dubai, I also wore it, but then I wore it on a bracelet because of the sun and also the moisture. As I told you at the beginning, I didn't just collect wristwatches in the past one and a half years, but I dove deep into pocket watches, table clocks and other weird creations. So here, for example, we have my old pendant watches, which I showed you in my previous video about my pocket watch collection. But since then, it basically doubled. I bought this one as well. This is the latest acquisition in this category. It's nicely decorated, beautiful dial. And also it has a nice back, which is, I think, either painted or printed. I'm not sure. Again, I paid 70 bucks for this one, so I don't really care what the you know, decoration is and the process and everything. Once I get a girlfriend, if she likes watches, this is something she might receive if she likes it, of course. And then I jumped into pocket watches. I featured this one in the video before where I cover the other watches I have. This is a mariage watch, basically it's small pocket watch, closed and also made to fit on the wrist. This is a Angelus alarm pocket watch, a super cool piece when you can open up the case pack and put it on your nightstand next to your bed. And if we open up the case pack, you'll see the beautiful movement inside. A really cool watch. I love it. The chime is very nice. And just overall a cool piece. The watch you also saw in the other video was this Minerva Rattrapant movement. So basically it has a stopwatch function with two separate times. With this button you split it. Very easy, very typical for a Rattrapant movement. Again, these watches are fun, not expensive and I love to collect them. My goal with pocket watches is to collect them in a different condition and also to collect different complications. So this is one Rattrapant I have and probably the last one for the moment. 
I also purchased this jump hour watch here, which is very cool. I don't see these around a lot. It's in, I would say, good condition. It has like hairline scratches, but nothing too bad if you think about how old it is. You see, this is the same principle basically, and that's why I bought it. If this one wouldn't have these decorations on the dial, it would be pretty much the same. Love it. And then we move on to a very special thing I got as a gift. So I got this as a gift from my friend Bader, who we also made a collection video about. Definitely something you should check out. And this is actually a pedometer. So when you press it, it changes the number. Pretty simple. You can use this for various reasons. I think in the Middle East, they were using this for the prayers. So basically they would count how many prayers they did and that's it. Or maybe they were counting steps, which I highly doubt. This is also something I recently bought and I just received it a couple of weeks ago. When I found this watch online and the description of it, there was an old paper which showed different models. And actually, to my coincidence or luck, these ones were in the same category or in the same pamphlet basically back then. This is not a watch, it doesn't show the time per se. It's a roller man, you see it's a blacked out case. But it's a roulette table with a real ball inside. So you turn the crown like this, I'm gonna play the roulette. <laughs> oh, we landed on the number zero, pretty lucky. So again, you spin it and that's it. It's just a fun little object. Again, not expensive. I love to collect these, you know, weird creations and they bring me a lot of joy. So when I get the mail, I open it up, I play with it, I'm happy. <laughs> Simple as that. Something I also always wanted to have is this big pocket watch movements with the eight day power reserve. So maybe you would recognize them. And this one is very special because it has a different dial than most of them. Usually they have enamel dials, are more decorated, more, I would say, um, not so nice. This one is slightly more refined, watchmaking-like. And you see there's an open balance here at six o'clock. The cool thing about this pocket watch is that it has eight day power reserve. You can wind it like this, or if you open the case pack, you can actually wind it like this. Because this whole part is basically the barrel. Again, eight days with the crown is pretty annoying. So with this, you can shorten the time and have it wound much quicker. It has beautiful blue hands, nice dial and a cool balance at six o'clock. I just had to have it. Again, not expensive. I love to buy these things, you know, to treat myself monthly or sometimes even weekly. Um, depends how lucky I am. And they don't cost me a lot of money, but I think they're important pieces of watchmaking history. Something I also bought recently online on the Swiss website, which I always find things on, was this Roa watch. This is something because I bought, because I like the dial. That's it. Simple as that. Yeah. I love the Art Deco Breguet numerals and the Breguet style hands. And what's very cool about this watch, and it actually was something launched in a recent Louis Erard watch, which was introduced last year, a nice guilloche pattern on the back, which acts like an optical illusion. And once you open up the case pack, you'll see that the movement has a special type of decoration as well. Nothing, you know, too high end, but again, for a small amount of money, I wanted to have it and that's it. What you also have seen in the recent video is my table clock, which is this one right here. This is a Luxor World Timer clock. It's also an eight day power reserve movement inside. You wind it on the back. Really cool piece, I love it. It's now my decoration on my office desk. Uh, I never wind it, I always leave it like this, 10-10 basically, just because it looks cool. And table clocks are nice, but sometimes annoying to wind all the time, that's it. Uh, you maybe remember my GMP table clock, which I also showed in the video before. It shows the time, the date, it's a thermometer and also a hygrometer, which shows you how much vapor is in the air, basically. Pretty cool and very quirky. Never saw it before. Also, I paid less than a hundred bucks for this. Something I bought recently was this Bucherer table clock. It's actually a quartz clock and I love it because it is in the shape of a pipe. It's very well made, nicely polished, so the wood is in good condition. And you see it's literally the size of a real pipe. Uh, you can take this out, 
So then you have the insides of the watch and you can also basically wind it. You can take this part out so you can set the time more easily, of course. And you see this is the inside, nothing special, empty. And this is the watch. It's a quartz watch with a date window at six o'clock. It's, I would say, in mint condition. No scratches or cracks on the crystal. This was slightly more expensive, but you don't see this daily. So, you know, just if you do, buy it. You know, you can maybe even smoke. I don't know. <laughs> this is something I can give to a Philippe Dufour. He's known for this thing. <laughs> also, what I love to focus on lately was um, chiming pocket watches. So I purchased two quarter repeaters in the last few months. One was this one, a beautiful silver cased pocket watch, which is made in 1906. I mean, at least that's what the case says. So the case was made then, probably. It's hand engraved, the front, side and the back with a nice griffin. The dial is in great condition. The hands are blued and there's a button on the side. So when you open up the watch on the bottom here, you'll see the beautiful movement and you'll see the quarter repeater complication now. So when you press the button in, you see how it now chimes. Beautiful. You see the governor turns and then when it finishes, it just stops. I love pocket watches because you can get a high complication for not a lot of money. I think they're nice to collect. I love to wear them sometimes as well. But the only problem with pocket watches is that they're hard to repair. Not hard, but expensive. So if you buy a pocket watch, my advice with owning a few right now is that you buy the one in the best condition. So if you find a nice quarter repeater like this, and if it doesn't work, don't buy it. If the dial is cracked or the crystal is cracked or whatever, don't buy it. I mean, I'm in Switzerland. And this watch right here doesn't really work. It does work if I put down the front and the back, but it doesn't keep the time accurately. So it needs a revision. And the amount of money I would spend on repairing this watch in particular is I think triple than what I paid for it. So again, a cool watch, but now I probably wouldn't buy it again because it doesn't work. But in the future, when I have enough money, I'm gonna try to restore all the pocket watches because I think they're nice pieces of watchmaking history. And the masterpiece of my collection that I bought a few months ago as well is this, I call it the big boy. This is a very heavy travel clock. It looks like a big pocket watch, but you can see the size of it next to my head. It's, it's, it's pretty big and heavy. This weighs 633 grams. It was made by the Airgas company, which was bought by Patek Philippe in 2001. So the quality is exceptional. It's, I would say, in mint condition. There's a few hairline scratches, but nothing special. The dial is open, so we can see the components moving, which I really love. It has an alarm function. It has a quarter repeater on demand, and also it has a sonnery. So there's two switches on the top of it here. This one is to turn on and off the alarm function, like on your phone, basically. So when you slide it down, you turn it on, and when you slide it up, you turn it off. And this one is to engage or disengage the sonnery or the repeater function. So basically each hour, the sonnery would chime the hours, and when 15 minutes pass, it would chime once for the passage of 15 minutes. Then again, for 30, it would chime twice, for 45, it would chime three times, and when it's four o'clock, for example, it would then chime four times. A very cool clock, I never seen one in person, and also when I searched for it online, there were a few results, but nothing too crazy. There's also a button on the crown, which is basically the quarter repeater on demand, and you'll see when we engage it, all the levers and the components are moving. The case spec is beautifully decorated. This watch is not in full gold, but it's gold plated, and it has a nice movement inside. Again, a clock movement. It came with a nice box and also the key, which is heart shaped like the logo here. And you can use this key, of course, to wind the watch and also to set all the functions. So now if I show you the front, this is for the time setting. We turn the hour and the minute hand and we can see all the components moving. Let's stop at 12 o'clock and maybe 45 or 48 
and we're gonna activate the quarter repeater now. You have to close it, of course, and the quarter repeater hammers here actually hit on this gong. You see? It's gonna be like this, basically. Let me show you guys. You press the button, I mean, how much better can it get? I would love to own a wristwatch Grande Petit Sonnerie one day in the future. So I'm gonna work really hard to achieve that. For me, the minute repeater and the quarter repeater are the nicest complications a watch could have. Visually, I also love the tourbillon and triple axis tourbillons. But again, just from a watchmaking perspective and because I love music, this is the one for me. A very rare timepiece something i bought for a really good price again i bought it online on this swiss platform which i always uh, promote indirectly um, i don't think you'll ever find another one uh, if you do buy it immediately this is a watch i bought again for my passion because i love watchmaking because i love clocks pocket watches and also because it's just fun at the end of the day that's it what i also got for christmas from my dad he made this for me was this beautiful clock with my logo inside i'm really happy to have uh, you know parents and i'm lucky to have parents who support my hobby and my passion and they always surprise me with gifts like these so it was definitely the best christmas gift i got in a while i also started to collect the uh, old watchmaking tools like these because i think it's nice to have them as a decoration in our studio and also in the movies we do and also the videos again i started to collect also a lot of books uh, one is here on the table, it's a book about Breguet watches made by Thomas Engel, the German watchmaker, who's also very good if you Google him, because it's fun. I like to decorate my surroundings with watches, with components, with everything around the watches that I love, and that's it. It doesn't always have to be a Grail watch or a Rolex or whatever. Speaking of it, I have one Rolex on the table here, it's my Oyster Perpetual 36mm with the nice yellow dial. Lately, the Tiffany dial variation is going through the roof. It fetches prices which I think are simply stupid if I can say like that. The demand is crazy, but again, in business, the market is the market is the market. So if the people wanna pay the price for it, if they wanna pay 40,000 for a 41 millimeter Oyster Perpetual with a Tiffany dial, so be it. I'm really happy with my choice. This also, of course, goes for a high premium currently at around 11,000 Swiss francs, but I bought it for 5,300 like the retail price was. Rolex did increase prices at the uh, beginning of this year, so the price went up again, but this watch I'm gonna keep because I love wearing it. It's a quirky Rolex, not your typical one, so definitely something to keep and to have and love. I don't have any yellow dial watches on the table, so this is something that really fits me as well. Let me know which is a favorite watch of my collection. Which one would you like to own? And also give me some advice. What should I buy next and what is missing? I'm also curious if you're intrigued by pocket watches, table clocks and other mechanical creations as well as fountain pens. Leave a comment and we can discuss it there. I think I want to slightly slim down the collection. Maybe sell a few pieces and focus on small collection and grail watches. It's gonna be super difficult because most of these watches I bought out of passion and a particular reason, but I tried to trim it down and add something very special in the next year. I have two watches coming in the first quarter of this year. One is a custom Felipe Piculic, which I teased a bit on my Instagram channel, so check that out. And also one watch which is gonna be introduced by the Singapore Watch Club. So if you remember the Hublot, that was launched a few years ago. So this year we have a new edition coming out and it should be out in the first quarter of this year. Super excited, we've been waiting a long time for it and definitely a nice piece. You'll see it soon. Thank you all for watching, keep collecting and I'll see you soon.